in a much better world where there's a majority coalition in government, like we kind of have here in Massachusetts now, like what could the future of this flourishing economy, of this new different type of economic system look like, you know, from a financial structure or just from a, a human-based self-actualization is empowered, right, protected theme? Well, that's easy. No. <laughs> um, I'm going to take a piece of your question because we're here at the CIC. So the CIC, where I work for a year uh, on various projects, um, is a wonderful institution except for one thing that I've always expressed some, because not the CIC itself, but the model we have for the developing ideas. So, um, and I'm not condemning CIC, it's just that the, the, uh, you create these ideas and then you go, you want to bring them to market, you want to develop them, you want to grow, you want to gain revenue. So what do you do? You have to look for investors. You have to look for an angel investor and, and then eventually venture capital and you have to have rounds and blah, blah, blah. Well, what happens with that? Um, Gradually, ownership is shifted where the priority is to the shareholder and the owner and the investor. And that investor eventually acquires the ability to hire or fire whoever set up the company or to guide it. And the and, and I'm not anti-capitalist, I'm not at anti-venture capital, but you can see that's just one model of ownership. Not everything should go through the VC model. Not everything should lead to people having shares and to looking for markets because Sometimes it leads to absolutely wonderful stuff. Sometimes it leads to being locked into a system of ownership, which is not necessarily the ideal one for society. There are other forms of ownership. Um, and in fact, I would say that if you want to look about economic systems, the question of ownership has to be dominant. I mean, if you're looking at uh, communities of color, what have they been denied most significantly over the entire period? Ownership, ownership in businesses, ownership of homes, uh, ownership of all kinds of other things that that's what builds wealth. That's why you have, uh, you know, this famous study done by the, the Boston Federal Reserve that showed that the average net worth of a white family is $250,000 in assets. The average of a black family is $8. That means that debt, their debt and their assets balance out to $8. Hispanic, it's close to zero. So that accumulation of wealth comes from ownership, the ability to pass ownership on, to pass ass assets on. And because of systematic economic and racial discrimination, people have been denied that. And that's one of the core arguments to address that explicitly. Um, so I could go on about that, but there are ownership of land. Uh, land, they're not, as they say, not making any more of it. So the value keeps going up. Well, you could have community land trusts. There's a whole new economy movement. I encourage people to look at neweconomy.net. There are many other, uh, there's all kinds of systems of community ownership, which are not perfect. They get into then human politics that you have to work with other owners and annoying people who have different views. But the idea that you automatically go from idea to funding to private markets to, you know, then looking for an exit strategy and all that stuff, that's only one pathway. And sometimes it bottles up technologies. A great example of this is also pharmaceuticals. You know, we develop key innovations in our public labs, and then we hand them those that uh, information over to pharmaceutical companies who then charge enormous amounts of money because there, there's a special market around pharmaceuticals. Of course, they need some money to keep going, but some of it is just flat out exploitation because of people who are, to use the technical term, they're not, uh, they're inelastic to price for medical products they depend on. So again, I could go on, but if people are gonna think about how in the long term do we wanna make change, we wanna have more varied forms of ownership, we wanna have wider forms of democracy, we wanna include participation, we wanna provide encouragement, we wanna people give the people skills right from the beginning. And the key to the 20 years from now are the kids in school today. And that's why it is incredible to me that local communities say, ah, well, I don't have kids, I don't care about the local school system. That's ridiculous. And building that sense of community, of being able to come together to achieve great goals. Well, not everybody can change the world overnight, but you can change your local community. You could be an example. And to go back to your question about Massachusetts, we are in a position to do dramatic things that the rest of the country cannot do. And part of my willingness to run for office was to basically encourage the legislature 
which is full of great people, but is very cautious to reach out and grab those big goals. And we're all in a position to support that. Cooperatively owned businesses. You know, I'm definitely trying to turn my video production agency into a cooperatively owned business for, yeah. because I want our team to be around forever and working and feeling like they're empowered. Ownership. Um, ownership, exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, there's this other quote that hopefully sparks. We can either have wealth concentrated in the hands of the few or we can have a functioning democracy. We cannot have both. And at the time, in this society where we have the largest wealth inequality there is, we, we clearly don't have a functioning democracy. I really, at least at the national scale, and land doesn't vote. It's another big piece of it that we can get into a whole other talk about. And the history of cooperatives is a fascinating one. They used to dominate the United States in the 19th century, and there's still 100 million Americans who are connected to cooperative without even sometimes knowing it. Um, there were African-American cooperatives that uh, built a separate economy because of racism was denying them access, and they were eventually crushed by white racist government structures. But th that's a whole proud part of America 